Welcome back to Verdun Weapon Reviews. Today we're going over the Webley Scott self-loading pistol. Well, what can I say about this pistol? Well, it's a box, as you can see. It's the least shapely pistol I have ever seen. I like to call it the Jack in the Box, because this pistol is a jack of all trades and a master of none. And I think that's fitting. Jack in the Box, Jack of all trades, it's, and it's a box. Alright. So let's go over some short history. If you want more history on the gun, look in the description. I will have linked several videos and articles on the gun. The Webley and Scott self loading pistol was designed by Webley Scott. No surprise there. The gun was developed for both military and civilian sales. The pistol was first adopted by the Royal Navy as the British Army didn't see the point of it over the Webley revolver. It fires the 455. Webley auto round, which is not the same as the 455 Webley revolver round. They're actually pretty different, despite being the same uh, width, but the uh, case length is a lot longer. So, with the round originally f being a cordite round, a cordite is a smokeless repellent that kind of looks like noodles. Go look it up. Search British cordite. It looks like a a bunch of noodles, which later changed to nitrocellulose. British always had their love of weird smokeless powder instead of, you know, just powder. Well, it's not really a powder, it's more of a smokeless propellant, what they liked using. So yeah, uh, the gun uses a short recoil system and has a seven round magazine, even though you could have one in the chamber so for eight rounds. Now, uh, one thing unique about this in real life is that this is a pistol with a magazine cutoff. You might be asking, what is a magazine cutoff? Well, during the 18, late 1800s, after s bolt actions had been adopted over single shot rifles, militaries wanted to keep the single shot feature of their rifles to go along with their previous tactics. So most rifles that had a magazine had a magazine cutoff where you would basically select it and you could only you would only feed one round at a time. It was sort of like a select fire. So you would have one shot whenever you were just doing regular battle and then whenever there are a whole bunch of enemies you would take the selector the um, round cutoff off so then you have the magazine. It was a pretty neat idea and usually only pertained to rifles. However, the British military wanted that in this pistol for some reason. And so it has one. You you fire it, or chamber it, you fire it, you drop one in, you close it. Not sure why the British military wanted this on a pistol, as it sort of makes sense on a rifle, but a pistol... I don't, uh, I don't get it. Now this feature is not in-game. It'd be kind of useless, but since the gun... We'll talk about the gun's stats in a short while. So, yeah, the gun served from 1910 to 1942 and was made in 455 Webley and I believe a 38 caliber. I could be wrong for the civilians. I know it was 455 for the military and I think 32 or 38 for the uh, the civilian market. Now we get into the how the gun is in game. Well, it's the second best semi-automatic pistol in the game, but it's extremely rare. The best semi-auto pistol list goes M1911 Webley Scott Ruby Luger FN1900 Mauser Room Handle. Those are in order. 1911 is the best because it's you can shoot it real fast and it has a good amount of rounds. The Webley Scott is slightly worse than 1911. Slightly. The Ruby is a submachine gun and used to be the best pistol in the game. The Luger was the second best pistol and now it's dropped down to fourth for semi-automatics. I'm not including revolvers in this list because they have very separate damage models. The FN1900 is kind of just there if you're Belgian. I mean it's kind of like a worse ruby. Some people like it because it's real skinny and doesn't take up a lot of the screen. And then we have the terrible Mauser broom handle. Mauser broom handle is awful because it has a very slow rate of fire and you can't reload it partially through the magazine. Like, it has 10 shots, but 
you know, you have to fire all ten to reload, and it has like a four-shot kill. So, kind of making it useless. At least to me. Some people might like the Mauser room handle. There's better choices, especially since the German side has three pistols. Now, the Webley Scott holds seven rounds, which is one more than the Webley Revolver. And it's a two-shot kill at close range, and a three to four at longer ranges. I don't think it's better than the Webley Revolver, since they are both made for CQC. And it only has one more round, and requires more one more round to, to kill. Because the Webley Revolver has six shots, and, and is a one-shot kill at close range. Meaning you can get six kills. The Webley Scott semi-auto requires two shots at close range and has seven shots which means you can get three three and put a damaging shot into someone which isn't very good you know leaving someone putting one round pistol round into him isn't very good because Verdun has a fairly fast um respawn health and regenerating health system however there is one advantage over the Webley Revolver. That is, Verdun has hit detection problems, as you'll see in the video. So, this pertains to all guns. So, the Webley Revolver still has a hit detection problems, as I said, but the Webley Scott, that has hit detection problems as well, but that's just the engine. But because the Webley Scott you can fire pretty fast, you can get more rounds into the target, meaning that you're more likely to get a shot that registers. So, I recommend, don't fire this gun slowly. Just unload on people. Like, you'll see, I try, in the video, I try firing slowly on a guy, and it just doesn't work. So, I had a lot of problems getting footage for this gun, uh, for a couple reasons. One, is I believe only one class has this, and that's the Tommy's officer, the, one of the British officers. And that's in front lines. On the North American server, 90% of the squads are U.S., 5% are Canadian, and probably like 1%, or probably the rest are a mix of what's left. So, it's very hard to get non-U.S. gun gameplay. I'm just saying. Now, I tried attrition gameplay. Now, in attrition, you can basically pick anything you want. You can pick an MP18 and a Webley Revolver. You can pick a Ross Rifle... You know, any combination you want, really. Any combination of primary and secondary. The problem is, attrition is awful. Attrition is a terrible, terrible game mode. Like, the maps are too big, the teams are too small, and it's just really hard to get pistol gameplay if the enemy team is somewhat competent. The only reason it worked in the Ruby gameplay is because I happened to get, like, a team, an enemy team that just didn't know. I guess they were new to the game. So yeah, that's the end of this review. However, I wanted to say, um, I wanted to talk about Tannenberg a little bit. So, I will be doing weapons reviews for Tannenberg. However, Tannenberg will share a lot with Verdun. A lot of the things are going to be the same. This includes German weaponry. If the gun is in Verdun already, I'm not going to review it again for Tannenberg. I might say it's better than something, you know, like if it's a pistol and I and it's better than the Russian or Austro-Hungarian pistol, then I'll say that. But, like, the Gewehr 98, I'm not going to review the Gewehr 98 again, or a Car 98, you know, if I do them already. I'll still be doing redone weapons reviews once Tannenberg is out. However, it's not going to be, you know, I'm not going to do two reviews on the same gun. Um, yeah, I just wanted to, if there's any footage left... I don't know how much footage I recorded, uh, just enjoy it. Be like a regular Verdun game. Alright, bye.